and welcome to Victory Kids Online. We are so glad you decided to join us at Virtual Kids Church this morning. Let's start out by thanking God for this awesome day. Join me in prayer. Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our family. We thank you for school, whether it's at home or in person, God. We thank you for church. We thank you for so many things, God. You are so awesome. You are so worthy of our praise. We love you. And everybody said, amen. Let's dive straight into our big God story. Hello, Victory Kids, and welcome to Storytime with Pastor Teresa. And Kylie McSmiley! <laughs> hey, Kylie. Hi, Pastor Teresa! So, are you helping me with my Bible story today? Yes, I love telling stories. I'm so excited. Okay, well, that will be great. So I prepared a lot of props for today so the kids can see. So why don't you go over there and um, get them ready and that will be fun. Okay, that sounds like so much fun. I'll go do that. All righty. All right, kids. So today in our big God story, we are going to go way back to the beginning in Genesis. So let's open up our Bibles and get ready. Genesis 1.1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Wow, God is our creator. He made the sun and the moon and the stars and all the planets. The Bible says that on earth, God made man out of dust and he breathed life into him. <laughs> God also made a beautiful garden called Eden. It was absolutely perfect. Think of the prettiest flower you've ever seen and times that by a thousand. I can only imagine how amazing it must have been. But that's not all God put in the garden. God placed a very important tree in the center of the Garden of Eden. It was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam he could eat from any other tree except for this one. Now, God gave Adam a very important job. God told Adam to name all of the animals. God created the animals and he could have named them himself, but he chose to include Adam in this important job. Imagine how much fun Adam had. Think of coming up for names of a giraffe or an iguana or even a hippopotamus. So much fun. So. At this point, God made all of the stars, the planets, the animals, the trees, the flowers, and Adam. But there was one more creation. He was going to make a woman. That's right. God created Eve to be Adam's wife. Life must have been so wonderful for Adam and Eve. They lived in a beautiful garden. They never felt pain or sadness or fear. And guess what? God himself came to visit them and he took walks with them in the garden. Hmm. But sadly to say, something happened to change all of this. Dum, dum, dum! Remember how God told Adam not to eat from that one tree in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, one day Satan, in the form of a talking snake, spoke to Eve about the tree. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Eve said to the snake, well, God told us that we would die if we ate from the tree that's in the center of the garden. But the snake lied to Eve and said, you won't die. You will be like God. Eve made a huge mistake. She listened to Satan's lie and she ate the fruit from the tree. She even gave some to Adam. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and with that disobedience, sin entered the world. Sin is disobeying God. 
God is perfect. And God created people to be in relationship with him. But because God is perfect, he cannot have a relationship with sin. So sin breaks a person's relationship with God. So sadly, because Adam and Eve chose to sin and disobey God, Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden of Eden. In Romans 3.23, the Bible tells us that just like Adam and Eve chose to sin, so do all of us. By disobeying God, we all choose to break our relationship with Him. But don't you worry, because that's not the end of the story. God loved his children so much that he promised to send a redeemer to restore the relationship between God and people. Imagine with me for just one moment that you owed a million dollars to someone and you couldn't pay it back. A redeemer would be someone who would pay the debt for you. The price of our sin is so, so much more than a million dollars. Our debt for sin is spending forever and ever and ever away from God. But our redeemer, he paid that price for us. Jesus, he is our redeemer. He's God's son. He came to earth in his human body. He was fully God and fully man. We may not really understand it, but we know it's true because the Bible says so. Jesus, he never ever sinned. So when he died on the cross, he paid the price for our sins. He died and then he rose again so that we could have a restored relationship with God. Praise the Lord! God created us to be with him. Even when sin entered the world, God had a plan to make a way for us to be with him once again. And Jesus is the way. God loves us so much and he created us to be with him. Boys and girls, Jesus, he is our redeemer. He is the way and you need to choose him today. everything and he made it perfect but 
sin came into the world and it messed so many things up. Most importantly, our relationship with God. But God was not thrown off whatsoever. He had a plan. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And he rose from the dead and he saved all of us. Now we can be in a relationship with God. And if you have not made that decision to follow Jesus yet, and you would like to today, it's real simple. The Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our hearts, that Jesus rose from the dead, and we will be saved. Jesus did the hard work for us. We just have to believe in him and declare him our Lord. So it can start out like this, dear Jesus, and then tell him that you believe in him. Tell Jesus you believe he, he died on the cross and rose from the dead. Tell Jesus that you are sorry for your sins and that you don't want to sin anymore. You want to follow him. And then do that. Follow Jesus. Do what he tells us to do. And please remember to tell us so that we can celebrate with you because this is the greatest decision you can possibly make. That's all for today. We look forward to seeing you in person on Wednesday, September 9th for Girls Ministries and Royal Rangers classes at the North Campus and again on Sunday the 13th at the north side for our preschool, early childhood, and elementary services. They will all be open and we look forward to seeing you there. If not, that's okay too. We look forward to seeing you virtually for our next episode of Victory Kids Online. We're the Victory Kids. Yeah, we're growing in Jesus. Read the word every day because we need it. Making friends one kid at a time, even the ones in the back of the line. We're the Victory Kids. Serving others with our gifts and talents. Put others first, yeah, that's the challenge. Reaching the world, we're making disciples. That's us right here. We're the Victory Kids.